everybody and welcome back to Halloween Town How To. So today I'm going to be starting on my Halloween costume for this year. I'm going to be the clown with no face. I did get the mask from Spirit of Halloween this year. However, when I was looking around, there was no costume available for it. So my first thoughts was to grab the Killer Clowns from Outer Spaces costume and redesign it to look like this character. However, it wasn't bulbous enough. So I just decided I'm gonna try to make my own costume. I've never done anything quite like this before, so it will be challenging. I'm really scared about making this. However, I'm always up for a good challenge. And if it is a complete and epic failure, I'll just go back and pick up that costume. And I'll probably just get a few sizes bigger than what I would typically wear. Hopefully that would give me enough room. So with that, Let's get started on this project. All right, so this is my rough sketch of kind of the design concept I'm thinking about. Um, I want it really bulbous as um, the character is. So I went ahead and with white pool noodles, the large one is for the waist area. This one is going to be for my neck. Now, I did tape this together. However, when I create the costume, um, when I'm at a certain point, this will not be together so I can put it on and off. I'll come to that at that point. These two are my legs, which is this area to kind of create that open feel. And then these two are for my arm hope opening. I will take measurements and put the measurements on my sketch to um, then create a template. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. All right, so with some help, I had to kind of put the pool noodles on and get some measurements from that. And now I'm going to start my pattern using some craft paper. And I do not have a soft um, measuring tape using this. Gotta use what you got. So fingers crossed this uh, comes out all right. All right, so I have my pattern drawn out and I really don't know how this is gonna turn out, but I'm gonna cut it out and uh, it uh, really was quite difficult because this is not really the way my mind works. So we'll see. So this is the fabric I picked up. I got five yards of this yellow that was $2 a yard. 
and this purple for the accents and the collar. I think I only got a yard and a half of this, also $2. Got them from Joanna Fabrics. And then this for when I'm going to use the iron. And then also going to be using my glue gun. But for now, I'm gonna stretch the yellow out and trace my pattern. All right, so I have my pattern laid down on the fabric. I have it positioned so that way um, after I'm done tracing this out, I'm going to mark my center points, slide the fabric up, and flip this over so the front is one whole piece of fabric. Alright, so I flipped the pattern over and now I'm tracing the other side of the front. And I did mark the top and bottom with where the pattern um, ended from the other side. All right, so I cut out my pattern. I folded it back in half, and I'm gonna put the pattern back on and show you what I'm gonna do next. All right, so what I'm gonna do is see all of these diamond pieces. I need to go in and cut that down so when I fold it over, there won't be extra fabric. Um, that's going to create creases and lump up. So that's how you solve that problem. I believe it's, I don't know if it's called darting. I think darting is something different. I don't know all the sewing technical terms, but I also want to define these areas as well. So I'll give it a little snip. Okay, so I cut those sections that I needed to for wrapping around the pool noodle and also around the belly section. So I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna work on the back part of this pattern. I am just using the same pattern for the back as the front. I don't know if this is gonna work, but it might, so I'm gonna give it a try. Okay, so I am laying the pattern out on top of each other, making sure that I have them reversed so the inside is facing on the table and the inside of it is facing out on this front pattern. Hopefully I explained that properly. Um, so I'm just going to get my clips and just clip this together on all the seams. This is what I'm using to seal up the seams of the side and the shoulders. Um, I have my iron set to high you lay down the tape with the paper facing up and you put your iron on it and you hold it for 20 seconds moving along the way. You give this a few minutes to dry and then you remove the paper. And I did do a little extra off of the sides which I'm going to remove right now just so it goes all the way up okay so i'm going to fold 
this back over and making sure that I match up my seams correctly. I'm going to hold it in place like that and I have a damp washcloth that I use for crafting to like wash stuff off. That's why it's all mucked up, but it's clean. Just gonna lay that over and then hold this down for 20 seconds and I will continue on and I will show you how it works out when I'm finished. All right, so the seams are dry and they are put together. So what I want to do now is I'm going to flip this over and just iron it. All right. So I'm going to do that to this section and then the rest of it. Okay, so I turned the project to the correct side. So now this will be the outside of the costume. I went back with the iron and just went back over the seam area that we just glued with the heat bonding agent. Um, so my next step, what I'm thinking is I'm going to take the neck pool noodle. So you can see the green line maybe underneath the duct tape and they have it sectioned so I know where I need to be when I lay this out. So when I was doing my pattern, I did a little mark here because this is gonna be tucked around where the front is going to be. So I added some duct tape to this so I can hot glue those spots um, without melting into the styrofoam. So that is my next plan. Okay, so I have the neck all done. These are the sleeves. And then I duct taped the back seam together for now. So my next task is doing the same thing, except for the arms and adding this to it. So once again, I marked top and I'm finding because I have the glue on low temp, this really isn't eating into the styrofoam. So I'm just going to lay that seam on to that. And then I will be tucking and gluing all of that. All right, so I'm giving it a quick try. I like the way this is turning out so far. So my next step is the belly part. So I hung this up so I can put the hoop on correctly. I did glue the front center and the rear 
And then I'm going to find the side corners, just like I did when I did the arms and neck, and then attach everything else. Okay, so I hot glued the base on, and I needed to make an internal structure. So I took a half of a pool noodle and went from the center of the neck all the way down to the center point of the bottom. Then from under the armpit to the side, same on this side, and then one halfway through. And then for extra support, some more. So that gives me the bowed out look. I did not do this for the back. The back is fine. I just wanted the front to look bulbous. So my next step is creating the bottom section. So I made two round pieces for my legs to go through. And I'm hanging this from my chandelier. <laughs> so that way it's pretty level. And I'm going to take some more pool noodles and build out the structure from the midsection to the legs. All right, so I went from the side to the side part of that circle, which is for the leg. And then I guess, hmm, he's seven inches out from the inside to the front. And then this is where I'm going to end the pants part. I did one on the back side, same here and same here. I did not do anything on the back side because that is going to allow me to sit down. Otherwise, uh, it would be kind of difficult. So tomorrow, I will finish putting the material on this section. And then because this material is so see-through, I have to do another layer. So I gotta run back to the fabric store to get some more fabric. Yay. Well, that's what I get for buying cheap fabric. But I really was unsure about how this was gonna turn out. And I didn't wanna spend a ton of money if it, uh, was a complete flop. So that's where I'm at. It's a good stopping point for today. All right guys, so I mistakenly deleted two important videos because you're gonna have no idea from the first day to where I'm at what the heck is going on. <laughs> so where the video picks up is I went to the fabric store and I picked up some batting. Uh, the batting is going to kind of create a nice, smooth, fuller, like overall fuller texture or what I can't even think of a word. Um, <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. Words just... You know, it's funny and I, I don't want to keep you what when, when I'm making these videos, I can't like my verbiage just goes out the window. And as I'm rewatching them, the words are coming to my head. And I don't know if it's just because I'm feeling the pressure of having to like, I just, I can't, I can't pre think it's just things just roll off of my tongue and I'm trying to remember what I need to say. <laughs> and then I just forget what I'm trying to say. 
all the joys of a TBA. And if you don't know what a TBA is, it's a traumatic brain injury. So <laughs> it's very frustrating. <laughs> for this project um so where this video picks up is the bottom part where the legs are where it meets the belly I have it covered in batting and I am trying to add batting on the inside underneath the back of this project because there's no skeleton structure so I just removed the fabric and pulled it up and I'm trying to glue this batting to the diamond shaped structure, then pull the fabric back down over it and glue it in place. So that is where I am at. <laughs> Frustration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I'm getting there. I'm not giving up. So let's continue this video. So before I close up this back section of the legs, I did the front already. I wanted to get this batting on the back side. So I actually had to rip off the fabric and pull it up so that way I can tuck this batting underneath. Um, so far it's working out and um, we'll see how it looks. All right, so I needed to cut a seam in the back in order to get in and out. So I just clipped the material with the batting and I am doing a, I think this is called a blanket stitch. Um, it just makes it a little more sturdy and you see if I can do it one-handed I will be impressed if I if I can so so you put it through and before you get to that point of this loop disappearing you stick your needle through and then pull it and that gives you that type of stitch and I'm going to continue up. All right, I got my batting on and now I am clipping the fabric to glue it on to the leg portion. So that is where I'm at. Okay, so the back and Bottom pieces are done. The front, however, I did not like the way it was coming out because I couldn't put this batting um, in between the front structure and it looking okay. So I'm just covering the front and I will just be going back over it with, with the yellow fabric. I'm learning through all of this. Okay, so... What I did to cut the pattern for this is I went up at the top and boop, 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 I come around, show you, I clipped it and then found the seams that I needed to follow to the arm, which I gave myself some extra material to fold under and so I'm just going to go around and I'm knocking the glue gun over. I'm going around and just hot gluing everything and when I get to, to the arm I'll cut out that circle and wrap the fabric in and hot glue it as well and then I'll do the same thing to the neck. All right, guys, I am finished with that. I love the way this is starting to take shape. Um, so what I learned from
from this process is definitely do structure first, then batting, then material. So a good video to watch is Adam Savage's Totoro costume make uh, that kind of helped me correct my issues. And um, I'm really liking the way this is coming out so far. So I'm going to flip the camera around and uh, let you know what I'm going to be working on next. Okay guys, so that does it for this video. I'm really happy with the way this is turning out. It, you know, it was highs and lows, mostly kind of lows and teetering in the middle, but I stuck with it and I now have a base costume. So what I learned from making this is, did I need a pattern first? No, I needed a structure first and then cover it with the batting because the batting gives it more of a fuller and also I, I like smoother that that's the word i'm looking for smoother finish for when you lay your fabric on top um and also it hides the structure so it's your, your fabric isn't doing kind of all these funky things. It's just laying very nice and uniformly. Um, what really helped me was a few weeks ago, I was watching Adam Savage's creation of his Totoro costume. And I, why didn't I think of that when I was starting this project? I don't know but kind of in my frustration state, I was just staring at it like, what do I need to do? And that had popped into my head. So thank you, Adam Savage, for helping me figure out what is wrong with my project and how to proceed correctly with it. So coming up on part two of the Clown With No Face costume make, I will be adding all the embellishments as well as creating kind of this dingy, dirty, spooky look to it with dry brushing some colors. I've never done that before. Uh, so this should be pretty interesting. Like I said, this is all new to me. And at this point, I just feel like the biggest weight is off my shoulders. The rest is just kind of fluff and fun at this point for me. So fingers crossed. Thanks everybody for tuning in again and watching my videos. I can't wait to see what everybody is making this Halloween for your props or projects. Please comment and subscribe if you haven't. Also, if you want to send me pictures of what you're making, you can find me on Facebook at Halloween Town Hall, or I believe a link to my email is there. You can send pictures there also, because I like to share people's projects, um, whether you're creating something that you saw off of my channel or elsewhere that is Nightmare Before Christmas related, or it doesn't have to be Nightmare Before Christmas related. I like everything. So let me know what you are working on. Tina and Tara, I can't wait to see once again what amazing things you are working on. I know I have seen some pics, so I'm going to hold off before if you guys let me share them again. Um, maybe if I get enough pictures, I'll kind of do a short video on everybody's pictures of what they're doing. And maybe I'll do a Q and A session as well. So with that, everybody, please get making, get creative. And I will see you on a part two of the clown with no face costume making. Bye-bye.